If you haven't tried Game Up, then you are missing out. Imagine your favorite seltzer and your favorite sports drink had a baby, but it's way better than that. Each can is 110 calories, low carb, 4.9 ABV. It's a nice light drink that is not light on flavor. Game Up comes in fruit punch, orange, lemon, lime, and grape. Pick it up at drinkgameup.com or at your nearest liquor store. We're going to announce it right now. Elimination Chamber, 5 a.m. The man called Dave is going to be doing a live watch along. Why? Because he's on bread man hours and he can do it and he's got the day off. I'm going to try and join him, but we'll see how that fucking goes. When he tags in. But before we get there, let's talk about the Elimination Chamber and let's maybe give you some predictions on what we think is going to happen tomorrow. Are we going to get a surprise? Any like people showing up tomorrow? I don't rock think and so. Roman. You think the Rock and Roman show up? I mean. Grayson yeah. Waller effect. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about that before we begin because that's not a match. So we do have Seth and Cody coming out here. You got to think it could lead to something. The biggest thing it could lead to is if The Rock and Roman are actually there and we get a face-to-face before uh, Mania. Yeah, because there was talk about them not going to Australia, I believe. And to me, Grayson Waller effect, I know Grayson Waller is from Australia, but to have an interview segment on like one of these premium live events, it seems weird. So something's going to happen. And what could be bigger than the Rock and Roman coming out, further stirring up this hot storyline that's been going over the last couple of weeks? And that's the biggest surprise I see on this show. I would agree. We got a pre-show match. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself now because wow. I said I'll, I'll be up here at 5 a.m. There's a pre-show match. Time's that shit starting. <laughs> I'm going to say probably 4 o'clock. Like, you would hope 4.30, but if you're going to treat it like a regular live event, usually for these smaller ones, it's an hour before. SummerSlam, it would be two hours. Right. We'll see if I get the time for the pre-show, guys. I will be up, and we'll be ready. We'll be going before 5, but. What's the pre-show match, by the way? Pre-show match I'm about to get to is uh, the Kabuki Warriors, Kyrie Sane and Asuka, defending the women's tag titles against Candice LeRae and Indy Hartrell. Cool for Indy. She's from Australia. They got her on the show. That's a probably about where that's going to be. <laughs> I was about to say, Dave, I think you can wake up at five and be fine. We'll imagine how this played out. I'm sure there'll be a replay at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get to the second match here. The Judgment Day. Finn Bauer and Damian Priest versus Pete Dunn and Tower Bait and Joe. I think you're going to like this. Tower Bait and Pete Dunn winning some matches lately, and maybe they're going to be a serious team because they even have a tag team name now. They are called the New Catch Republic. Okay, I like it. And this is this is what's possibly kicking off the main show, we're thinking? That's what it looks like here, according to America's most trusted news source, Wikipedia. I like the match either way. I really <laughs> like the team. Pete Dunn getting his old name back. Yeah. I would like to see them pick up the win. Like, Judgment Day is good, but Damian but Priest still it. has that briefcase. Mm-hmm. They've got other stuff going on that they don't need the tag titles as much. Absolutely. And honestly, even if this was just a transitional reign for Pete Dunn and Tower Bay, they're the kind of wrestlers I just like to see get some gold and see them have this kind of success because they're so good. And I used to feel this way about Mick Foley before he ever made it big and won the those WWE Championship back. I was like, oh, man, I just want to see Mick in big matches because he was so entertaining, you know. And that's kind of how I feel like about these guys. They've had great careers in NXT and NXT UK, and they've had moderate success on a WWE roster. It'd be nice to see them get some gold. This is our next matchup. Be- oh, so it's the WWE Women's Elimination Chamber. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Raquel Rodriguez, to me, you could, there's only a couple people this could be, but I'm going to go with Becky Lynch. We've been setting up Becky versus Ripley, I believe. You could argue Becky hasn't got the win over Nia Jax yet, so even if Nia Jax shocks the world, we'll, we'll predict on that later. Either way, I feel like Becky's the one that's being programmed for one of these two matches. I want to agree with you, but I got a feeling about Raquel Rodriguez. Mm. I dark horse pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a strange brew and out of left field pick, something you didn't think could happen. <laughs> All right. Well, I mentioned it. Let's move on. Next match. Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax. 
Rhea mm-hmm. Ripley in front of her home in Australia. She's going to be a big, big baby face tomorrow. She ain't. We didn't fly her out here. We didn't take her on every media tour. We didn't put her on the cover of this thing so she could just lose. Nia Jax has been built up since coming back. Probably the best run of her career. She's been taken seriously. She's been laying people out, and that's great. She's losing tomorrow, though. Yeah, there's no way Nia Jax could win. Like, if it were, if Vince were still in the company, I'd say the chances were 50 50. But Mm. I don't know if you've seen the promotional material since they've been over in Australia. They've had press conferences. She's drinking out of shoes. It, they're going big with this one. It's Mm. interesting the push that they're giving over there. And obviously, she's got to take home the gold for sure. Main event time, the big match. Who's going to be wrestling Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, L.A. Knight, Kevin Owens, Logan Paul. I just want to say, first off, pretty much almost all these guys have been built up in a good way. Drew McIntyre, the strongest, though. I mean, even a hooker crook, getting that win over Cody Rhodes, who nobody has beaten other than, what's your name's Roman or Brock? And Brock isn't the name we're going to hear too much anymore. You know, like, so... He seems to be the odds on favorite. A lot of people are picking him. I'm going to go in a different Dark Horse pick. I'll do the uh, Strange Brew thing this time. I'm going to go with with Randy Orton. I'm going to say Randy Orton gets this done. And I say that, too, because Randy Orton's a baby face and everything. He's on SmackDown. But my hunch is it's going to all play out eventually. Like I think Damian Priest maybe cashes in on Seth if he gets beat up in a tag match. And then the next night, it's Damian Orton. Orton will be that title holder on SmackDown. And I feel like Cody will win it from Roman this year, and Cody will be the champion. So I think it's all going to play out. So anyone who thinks there's gaps in this logic, be patient. But, yeah, I'm going Randy Orton. RKO, maybe. I agree with what you're saying about Drew. That was a great match on Monday. Really love the ending. I'm going to go left field pick again. And this one is purely going to be just because I'm a fan, but I, I want to see LA and I yeah. get it. like. He is somebody that needs that bump right now, and I I would like to hope it's him. I don't think the chances are big, but I'm I'm going with my heart on this one. I mean, that would have been my number third pick. All right, he's he's in there for sure. I think it'll be eventually something's going to happen where it leads to L.A. Knight and Logan Paul, and I think that's going to be L.A. Knight's big thing this year, winning that U.S. title from WrestleMania at Logan Paul. But we shall see. 